Thank you for watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are very, very happy to get some time with you. And I want to give a shout out to our partners. Thank you so much for helping us to cover the earth with the word and connect everyone to the heart of God. Partners, you're such a vital, essential ingredient, teamwork for us. And we pray that God continues to bless you and anoint you, encourage you, stir up your faith that nothing is impossible with God. And Mom, we have a special guest oh, we uh, that we're interviewing here. Who is our guest and today? This is Dr. Armanda Porter. And her book is Dear Anxiety, Let's Break Up. And so folks, we need to break up with anxiety because it can break us up. Very important day. That's right. And you know what, Mom? Sometimes people struggle with anxiety because they just don't have any good news. <laughs> Sometimes anxiety can be so dominating that we neglect to hear things that are positive and encouraging. So here's a testimony that, to encourage your faith. Kathleen lost her car keys for like two hours. And if you've ever lost your car keys, you lost your phone, you lost your wallet, ugh, right? That's super stressful. But after receiving prayer, she called for prayer, help me find my keys. Literally, a man ran up to her with her lost keys. <laughs> <laughs> I love that God answers prayer like that. That's just like super encouraging um, that God absolutely is concerned about big things as well as little things. So just encourage you, whatever the needs are in your life, make sure you hop on the phone and get on the website. We love to pray for you. Just like Kathleen called for prayer, we like to pray for you and we know that God answers prayer. And in just a few moments, we're going to be joining this really cool interview with Dr. Amanda Porter, and it will encourage you that God can overcome anxiety in your life. Marilyn and Sarah have been covering the earth with the word on television for over 50 years. But television isn't the only way their ministry can be viewed. Today with Marilyn and Sarah can be seen on platforms such as YouTube, Roku, Fire TV, as well as podcasts on iTunes and Google. It's easier than ever to be encouraged with God's work at home, work, or on the go. You can replay any program at any time. Tune in and be blessed. Hey there, I want to encourage you to download our app on your phone. You're like, really serious? Absolutely. We have some amazing things on our app, really convenient for you. We have today's program. We have opportunities to pray for you. We have places for you to give and partner with us. We also have things that will help you know what events are coming up and group tours that you could join, as well as a Bible reading plan, daily Bible reading plan. This app is super relevant, very convenient, and super helpful for your daily living with Jesus. Welcome to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are so very happy to have you with us today. And I know as you're watching, you have needs in your life. Uh, as you're watching today, you might be thinking about your finances. You might be thinking about a difficult conversation. You might be thinking about a work situation, a decision that you have to make. You might be thinking about some health concerns that you have. I just want to encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. We love to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer. And I always love this verse. Luke 1, 37 says, nothing is impossible with God. And that always encourages me because sometimes I get stuck in my own, it's impossible. And then God reminds me, wait, Sarah, nothing is impossible. Oh, okay, thank you. So hop on the phone, get on the website, give us the privilege and honor of getting to pray for you. And I want to introduce to you our guest today, Dr. Amanda Porter. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for hanging out with us. My pleasure. We love having you. Thank you so much. Totally good. Yeah. Um, not everybody in our audience is familiar with you. So mm -hmm. um, would you give us kind of a quick bio and then we'll jump into your book called Dear Anxiety, <laughs> Let's Break Up. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for having me. Super thrilled to be here. Um, and yes, I am a psych psychiatric nurse practitioner. I've been practicing for about 10 years at a place called the Linder Center of Hope in Mason, Ohio. We're affiliated with the University of Cincinnati. And in my work as a psychiatric nurse practitioner, I work with people of all ages, every diagnosis that you can think of across all levels of care. People come to us from all over the country seeking out help for their mental health concern. Maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's depression, maybe it's bipolar disorder, maybe it's a substance abuse problem. Um, and so I work with these folks on developing a treatment plan and helping them to recover from whatever their concern is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how'd you get into that? What what was kind of the motive, your interest that mm -hmm. led you to? Because yes. some people don't want to be around 
others who are struggling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Some people kind of shy away from exactly. that, right? And I think mental health in general, we're getting better about it, but there is still a bit of a stigma attached to people who struggle with depression or anxiety. But for me, it's been a very personal journey, journey because I struggle with anxiety myself. And I really wanted to get into this field to show people that it is possible to recover. It is possible to heal from anxiety. And when you say anxiety, what does yes. that mean to you? What, yes. how, what's the definition of that? Yes, I would associate anxiety with feelings of fear or worry or dread or a sense of a loss of control or a sense that something really bad is coming, you know, impending doom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when a person has that, I mean, there's times when we all have that, right? Sure. But what happens when it, like, is there a point where it becomes unhealthy and it tips the scale? Well, there's a point where a normative anxiety crosses a line and becomes disordered anxiety. So it's quite normal for us to be anxious or nervous um, during certain life events or things um, that come up in our life that, that we're worried about. Part of this is, is very normative, but for some people, their stress and their anxiety becomes chronic. It becomes um, very burdensome. It becomes out of control, um, out of proportion to whatever the particular stressor is. And for those people, um, they might qualify for a clinical diagnosis of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And you might be watching right now, maybe you're struggling with anxiety. Maybe you're struggling with fear. You've got some fears that just kind of continue to plague you, you know, kind of settle into your heart, hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you. And um, I'd love to encourage you to grab your copy of Dear Anxiety. Let's break up. So when you think about anxiety, um, here's a question that I think is really tricky sometimes for mm -hmm. Christians, people who say, okay, I'm a Bible believing, sure. following Jesus person. You know, sometimes um, a diagnosis will include uh, medication right? Yes. Uh, an antidepressant of some sort or whatever. Mm -hmm. And some Christians feel that that's sinful and it's not faith filled. Um, yes. how do you navigate medication, um, mm -hmm. with anxiety? Yes, that's a great question. And I'm so happy to talk about this topic. And I'm even happy to share that I myself take a medication to help with my anxiety. And so, um, I do, you know, it makes me really sad that some people feel like medication is not an option for them because they are told that perhaps they should be instead relying on God fully for healing and, and for recovery. And don't get me wrong. Absolutely. I pray. I pray for healing and, and recovery every day. And in the meantime, I'm going to use whatever tools are at my disposal to help me recover. I like to remind my patients that, you know, when I'm prescribing a medication, I certainly don't have any magic pills for anybody. There's no medication that's going to fix things overnight. There's no medication that's going to wipe out your anxiety forever and ever. But medications can go a long way with helping you rise to a certain level of functioning so that you can do all the hard work in all of the other areas of your life to um, continue your recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes I think there have been individuals that that have been critical, right? And judgmental, yes. you yes. know, you shouldn't, that's mm -hmm. wrong. That's sinful. You're not mm -hmm. trusting God. Yes. Um, and maybe some of the individuals were watching, maybe you and I have said some of that. I mean, cause we're all mm -hmm. guilty of saying things. And then we look back, we're like, what would you say to, to an individual or to mm -hmm. myself that has said, Hey, that's, you know, that's a lack of faith, you know, been yes. critical. Um, with somebody struggling with that, yes. what would you say to us potentially? I would remind people, you, anyone who asks me of uh, the story of where Jesus heals the blind man in the New Testament. And if you recall the story, he is approached by a blind man who asks for healing and Jesus could have very well spoken this man's healing into existence, but that's not what he chose to do. He chose to stoop down and gather up some dirt and remember he spits into it. He creates a muddy paste and he places this on the blind man's eyes. And this is how he chose to heal this man. He used a tool, right? And I believe that in, in today, um, in our modern times, the tool that we have is prescription medication. And I, I hope that, um, people feel comfortable approaching their practitioner to talk about this as an option, no matter what their spiritual beliefs might be. 
-hmm. as a tool. That's, That's cool. kind of helpful because mm -hmm. if you think about a toolkit, you got all kinds of tools in there, right? Yes. And you don't use a hammer if you're trying to screw something in, right? Yes. It's in a, and so you have to use various tools for di various functions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you look at anxiety, what are some other tools mm -hmm. um, that a person could employ in navigating yes. it? Yes, so definitely medication. And then a strong second would be therapy. Mm -hmm. So finding and connecting with a good therapist, someone that you trust to help point out um, bad habits that you're engaging in or help point out some of the cognitive distortions or thinking errors that you're participating in. Um, I think engaging with a therapist is really crucial, really paramount to recovery from an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things too, on day 18 in your book, you talk about persistence mm -hmm. and you use the verse, uh, Matthew seven verses seven and eight, ask, mm -hmm. seek and knock. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what does persistence have to do in relation to anxiety? Well, I think it's important to remember that anxiety is chronic. So for a lot of people, they, they come to me looking for a cure, looking for a fix, and there's some education that needs to take place because anxiety, we don't have a cure for it. We can manage anxiety, certainly, but the goal should never be eradication of anxiety. The goal is always manageability. And so helping someone to understand that they are going to have to show up for themselves every day, be very persistent, be very consistent in, in managing their anxiety because it's, it's going to be around for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And being persistent means you just kind of, the water defeats the rock, right? Mm. If you think about a stream, a river, sure. the rock is there and you see it, but the water always wins because mm. it's always present and it's always flowing and it's always going to, the erosion. Mm. I mean, it's just, yes. so it's that persistence. And how do you see God pers helping us with persistence? Mm -hmm. Well, he's the source of our strength, right? Where would we be without him? And so relying on the words of scripture, recalling that he loves us and he truly does want the best for us, keeping that in mind every day, whenever those anxious thoughts start to creep in, just realizing that he's there for us no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and you do some things in here. You have devotions that conquer worry and fear. Mm -hmm. Now, I love that because I feel speaking these every morning mm. is very important. Yes. So you start your day with victory thoughts. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And to me, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times being a pastor's wife, people call you, hit you early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And you think, what? What are you doing? So anyway, I like this that you have those there. Thank you. They're wonderful. So, you know, you need to get the book mm -hmm. because I, th I think you won't do it. You say, oh, that's a good idea. But will you do it? You know, doing good ideas. So be sure you get the book. Be certain you get the book. That's very important. And then make a decision. I'm going to speak promises to problems and move mountains. If you have a passion to reach the lost and are ready to release the anointing of God into your life, then join us today by becoming a partner. When you become a $30 a month partner with Marilyn and Sarah, we'll send you our welcome gift package, which includes the Jehovah Rapha oil vial with oil prayed over by Marilyn and Sarah, our exclusive partner CD set featuring 12 never before released teachings, the Majesty coffee table book, and more. Call or click today and help Marilyn and Sarah cover the earth with the word. Hey there, I want to encourage you to download our app on your phone. You're like, really serious? Absolutely. We have some amazing things on our app, really convenient for you. We have today's program. We have opportunities to pray for you. We have places for you to give and partner with us. We also have things that will help you know what events are coming up and group tours that you could join, as well as a Bible reading plan, daily Bible reading plan. This app is super relevant, very convenient, and super helpful for your daily living with Jesus. Break up with anxiety for good. For your gift of $35, we will send you Dr. Amanda Porter's 40-day devotional, Dear Anxiety, Let's Break Up. Written from both medical and biblical perspectives, this book will help you understand the Bible's message on mental health, free yourself from shame, guilt, and harmful stigmas, and learn to support loved ones who also struggle with anxiety.
We will also send you Marilyn's teaching CD, Winning Over Worry, and her mini book, Breaking Free From Fear, and Sarah's DVD, Hope For The Future. For your gift of $65 or more, we will include Marilyn's devotional, Beautiful Inheritance. This 101-day devotional is a culmination of her many years of in-depth Bible study and will show you how to reclaim your inheritance as you walk in His ways day by day. Choose faith over fear and move from a life marked by anxiety to one of peace and abundance. Call or click today for this anointed resource. Welcome back to today with Marilyn and Sarah. And you love this. We're doing the book Dear Anxiety, Let's Break Up. Do you ever get anxious? <laughs> I think if you say no, you're lying. <laughs> we'll, we'll pray for lying first. No, but anyway, yeah, you get anxious. Let's be honest. We, we tend to get anxious. How do we deal with it? Or do I just let it chew me up? That's bad. So, Amanda, in your book, you state that, that our relationship with God is not transactional. What do you mm. mean by that? Oh, gosh, it would be so much easier in our lives if whatever we prayed for, we were automatically granted or given, right? But that's unfortunately not how it works. I think that there are many instances where God perhaps allows a certain amount of pain in our lives to teach us, to help us to grow. I think that God is far more concerned with cultivating our character than he is with our comfort in this life. Yeah, and a relationship that's transactional. A transactional relationship is quid pro quo, Yes. right? If I do mm -hmm. this, you'll do that. If you mm -hmm. do this, I'll do that. That You know, it's kind of this sure. uh, cause and effect. And you say that's not true about our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm good enough, then God will do that, sure. right? Mm -hmm. um, but anxiety can live in that space if we mm -hmm. see a relationship with God as transactional, mm -hmm. right? So if God's not doing... We're doing our part, but God, you know. So right. how do you help a person in that space where they have said, okay, I, I've i done all these things and God yes. doesn't. And it's not transactional. How mm -hmm. do you, because that cre can create anxiety. How do you navigate that? Yes. It's tricky because, you know, when, when you read scripture, it talks about healing. You know, we're promised healing. We're promised recovery. Um, we're promised good things. Um, but the good things don't always come in this life. Sometimes those good things are coming for us in the next life. Um, I think that it can be very anxiety provoking for a person to check all the boxes and be doing everything that they think they're supposed to be doing. And yet the healing from the anxiety doesn't come. And so then perhaps the person feels like a failure. They feel as though they've been abandoned by God or that God doesn't love them. Um, and that is very crushing for me as a clinician to, to be a witness to that way of thinking. So it does take a lot of inner work to course correct and, and change that way of thinking because we do know that God loves us no matter what. And he does want the best for us. Mm -hmm. And you might be watching right now and maybe you're struggling. You feel like I've done all the right things, but I have all the wrong results. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're just really wrestling with that, with that scenario right now. Please hop on the phone, get on the website. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to pray that God would help you to walk through that, stay connected with God, and to see some redemption on the other side. And, you know, think about Job, right? Mm. Job in the Bible. He seems like the perfect poster child <laughs> for I did it all right. Yeah. I mean, like he sacrificed, you know, and did all these things. Mm -hmm. He was righteous. And, and yet, man, sure. <laughs> bad things happened to him. Sure. And he, you, we can read what he said. He, there's a lot of anxiety there. <laughs> yes, and grief. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you see some intersection between grief and anxiety? I think that I do. I think that um, grief can either be brought on by anxiety or it can be a byproduct of anxiety. Um, and grief, of course, comes in all different flavors, right? Not necessarily grieving over um, the passing of a person that you love, but grieving over some sort of other loss in your life. Um, but I do very much see grief and anxiety intertwined. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in terms of God participating in that space, right, mm-hmm. of grief, of anxiety, Job, mm-hmm. what do you see God doing in that? I just keep going back to the promises that he's made to us. You know, we're reminded over and over that we are loved, that we are his, that we belong to him, that he wants the best for us. Um, And I do believe that. So when we're in those very low moments, when we are grieving and we're at our rock bottom and we're feeling overwhelmed about what the future looks like for us, I just keep reminding myself of my identity in Christ and and what he has promised for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think in your book, you know, you talk in so many ways, so many different um, journal prompts and Mm. and writing and prayers and it's just a lot of ways to interact and engage Mm. so i like this because we don't just read it yes but then there's participation yes um one of the things one of the days you talk about in here is patience (laughs) (laughs) the patience of job oh my goodness what would you say to us as as far as patience in relation to anxiety yes this is a tricky one because I think it's it's human nature that we want things when we want them, right? And that's just not the way that healing and recovery works, especially from an anxiety disorder. We can do the work, we can do the steps, but sometimes it takes a while for that healing to come. So developing the patient persistence, I think, is key in recovery. And, and I like to remind my patients also that there's a very big difference between healing and curing. Curing is, um, you know, treating somebody for a symptom and then their illness goes away and then it's like they were never afflicted with it to begin with. You know, for example, strep throat. You have a sore throat, you go get your antibiotics, you're cured. You don't deal with strep throat anymore. But that that notion of curing is very different from healing. For anxiety, I, I don't think that we can be cured from it. But I do think that we can be healed from it. I do think that we can develop an acceptance and peace with our situation and our outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you see, you see a lot of people in the Bible that go through ups and downs and anxiety participates in all of that. Mm -hmm. Like I think about David. Mm -hmm. David in the Bible had a boatload of ups and downs and anxieties and stressors. Um, He didn't necessarily, wasn't cured. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading this morning about Absalom, his -hmm. son. (laughs) And, you know, that the tension there, mm. but you can see it in the Psalms, you see there's some healing, you know? Yes. And then, so when you kind of, cause that's a little bit of some undulations, ups mm-hmm. and downs, what would you say to person, to me, that goes through some of those ups and downs? Sure, you sure. You hit the trough, yes. but you want the peak. I would remind you that that is completely normative. We talk a lot in mental health about um, riding the wave riding the wave of, of, of the anxiety. And so there will be low points where you feel uh, completely perhaps abandoned by God. You feel um, very alone. You feel very negative, um, not hopeful for, for future recovery. And then there are going to be other days where you feel on top of the world. You feel like you finally have a handle on your symptoms or on your illness. Um, and those, those days are going to come and go. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. That's just the way it works because we're humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, there's seasons and sometimes life events, things that happen external that you're like, you know, yes, and maybe triggers, right? I think there are triggers in us too, that may, we may not be aware. Ooh, that Mm -hmm. scenario triggers. Mm -hmm. And then we get anxious. Any suggestions as far as those triggers? find a therapist. (laughs) I feel like that's my answer to most of these questions, but really finding someone who is skilled at the work that they do, who can help you kind of uh, dismantle the different anxieties that you're walking through the world with and help you understand what the deep seated root issue is of those anxieties. Mm -hmm. And then when you have those triggers, Mm -hmm. because they're going to happen. Sure. We never live in like this little bubble life it's inevitable Uh uh-huh you're gonna have them so then what you do with that Mm -hmm. you know and then how do you navigate that sure yeah sure any any kind of closing just quick suggestions if you're struggling with anxiety any quick Mm -hmm. like here's a tool that could be helpful yes yes i think it always for me goes back to self-care if you're not taking care of your body if you're not taking care of your, your own wellness, then you will struggle, unfortunately, with anxiety on a chronic basis. So it always always goes back to self-care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just encourage you, um, we'd love to pray for you. And self-care is an incredible, important part of not only loving 
letting God love us, but also letting God love through us. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you that God would help you to overcome anxiety. Break up with anxiety for good. For your gift of $35, we will send you Dr. Amanda Porter's 40-day devotional, Dear Anxiety, Let's Break Up. Written from both medical and biblical perspectives, this book will help you understand the Bible's message on mental health, free yourself from shame, guilt, and harmful stigmas, and learn to support loved ones who also struggle with anxiety. We will also send you Marilyn's teaching CD, Winning Over Worry, and her mini book, Breaking Free From Fear, and Sarah's DVD, Hope For The Future. For your gift of $65 or more, we will include Marilyn's devotional, Beautiful Inheritance. This 101-day devotional is a culmination of her many years of in-depth Bible study and will show you how to reclaim your inheritance as you walk in His ways day by day. Choose faith over fear and move from a life marked by anxiety to one of peace and abundance. Call or click today for this anointed resource. This has been such a powerful interview. Amanda, would you mind praying for our audience who are struggling with anxiety? Absolutely. Thank you so much for yeah. the opportunity. Father God, I feel incredibly grateful to be here with these women today. I feel incredibly grateful that you've placed me where you have in front of people who are struggling with anxiety, which I of course know so intimately myself. Father, I am so grateful that you have wired us up in such a way that we are instilled with an innate stress response that sometimes can go overboard and cause us chronic anxiety, but I am also grateful that you give us ways to cope. I am grateful for the different techniques that you've made available. I'm grateful for physicians and I'm grateful for medications. And Father God, I hope that anyone who's listening today understands that if they suffer from an anxiety disorder, that they are not broken, that there is an opportunity for healing and recovery. And thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for loving us so much that you make it possible for us to heal. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I love that. And you know, I just, as, I, as we're finishing this time together, I just feel in my heart that God wants to encourage you that God loves you. There's nothing you've done or haven't done that changes who God is. God is love. Mm -hmm. yes. And no matter what you do or you don't do, God loves you because that's who God is. You are deeply valuable, treasured, and loved by God. And that will never, ever change.